becoming uh, yes. more distinct. And I, I, I heard an interesting statistic. The main driver now for migration, people moving to a different place, yep. the main determining factor is our are uh, people not just in lifestyle on place, but have similar political viewpoints. Mm -hmm. In other words, people saying, I'm not going to move into that town or that city unless it's, it's a blue town or a red town. Okay. So we're becoming more and more uh, segregated in that way. So I think you're, you're right on there. You're right on there. We have, we have, to, we have to take the risks to engage people. And, uh, Risk I, I, and I think the... the the family is, is a, you know, an easy place to start. Not easy, but a convenient place to start. I was at actually at a, <clears throat> a, family, uh, a family gathering a week ago uh, in eastern Kentucky. It, wasn't, it was my wife's family. And uh, it, it's a different world, believe me. And there, there was, there was, a, there was a, a lovely young lady there who had a discussion with... Uh, uh, with my wife, and, and finally she just said, Connie, you know, the problem is, I really don't like black people. Wow. So, wow. and, uh, and she's not, she doesn't have horns either. She's, she's a very sweet girl, mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, very, very confused. Mm -hmm. So, the, the opportunities are there. We want to take them, I think. Yeah, agreed, but I, I absolutely agree with you. Very, very difficult. What I'm suggesting is very difficult. It's a great place to start. Family reunion, dining room table, great place to start. <laughs> How do we bring that into the community, though? How do we bring forward our, us versus them? How do we get rid of that black and white? Please. Um, I, think, I, I think sometimes, and this is really, really difficult. Yeah. Okay. And what you're saying is, we have to be able to not let our differences define who we are. Right. And that's extremely, extremely hard. It's, and I would think that people of the Christian community would be uh, uh, particularly attuned to this. Because Christianity is based on, as far as I know, two concepts. Forgiveness and understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And usually it's pretty easy to do it when it's kind of minor. If somebody bumps you in the, in the line or something like that. For a major difference, okay, I think that's really hard. I saw, okay, on television. And of all people for me to, to say this about, Dick Cheney. Okay. It was an interview he was having, and essentially he was shilling for um, uh, uh, President Bush. Mm -hmm. And he's going down this, President Bush is this, President Bush, oh, he's such a great guy. And we all knew that Dick Cheney had a daughter who was gay. Sure. And so I'm waiting for him to address this. And it was really surprising when I heard him come to that point and he said, yes, I have a gay daughter. And I don't agree with President Bush on this. Mm -hmm. However, on all these other attributes, he's a great guy. And this is, this is what I agree on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, and I'm not a Dick Cheney fan, all right? <laughs> Let me say this. But I gained a great deal of respect hearing him address that particular issue. The second thing, I have a neighbor. And she's probably Republican. And there may be some underlying racism to that effect. And when, during the, uh, President Obama's first campaign, uh, she's going, and who was he going against? It wasn't John, it wasn't, it wasn't John McCain that time. It was, yeah, you know, John McCain. Yeah. All right. And she's saying John McCain's a great guy. We go back and forth, right? And I'm detecting a little underlying racism. And we go back and forth, back and forth. Day of the election, we're still having this neighborly argument. Now you have to remember, I love my neighbor. When I moved into the neighborhood, I'm over here on Walkery Avenue, she was the first to my door welcoming me, welcoming me to the neighborhood. All right, so we're having this joust back and forth. And much to her credit, the day that Obama won that election, she came to me almost in tears and admitted, Avon, I didn't know until today, when, when she saw the worldwide acclaim and, and, and the response to how proud everybody was that we elected our first African-American president, that she came to me and said, I didn't understand until now how important it was. And that was a major step for her. And, and to me, okay, being able to accept her responsibility and to see it 
to show some empathy mm -hmm. was, to me, a major leap for her. Mm -hmm. Much to, like, maybe your neighbor, is what do we do with an individual or a group who isn't able to do that? Maybe it comes to your toxic relationship yeah. where you just have to divorce yourself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think there are, there are times in our lives where I think we also had to set ourselves up for success, so we, we need to develop a process, and whether that looks like one religious community talking to another, which, by the way, this is a very mixed religious community group. A, a number of years ago, this would not have happened, right? This would not, this wouldn't, wouldn't be. So there's, there are lots of barriers that have come down over time, but there are certainly those circumstances in life where you're not going to be able to make that bridge, you're not going to be able to make that connection. And, and I think it's important to be careful and be mindful of what your goals are going into that conversation. So I, I don't think that it's realistic to think that the conversation is that we will completely, fully, and totally turn your family around. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> and the question is, can we have enough of a bridge where we come into a relationship with each other so that we ring the doorbell and the bottle wins and, and have a conversation that's meaningful and connected to each other? That's really the question. Is that maybe that's the goal? Um, I think the goal can't be again. We can't go back to that black and white goal. It can't be they've completely come over to our side or we've completely gone to their side. There's a middle here somewhere, and it makes us uncomfortable, and, it, and it's hard to do. But um, I'm challenging us to, to push ourselves forward because again, think about what are the options if we don't do that. What are the options? What's the alternative? I, I feel that I can appreciate the, the great piece. I have yep. family members where we had a lot of really funky yep. family dynamics and it's gotten very tricky and I'm the middle yep. child and I've been more of a peacemaker. Okay. You know, saying we've got to figure out a way to look at our commonalities. Yeah. And um, I think what I struggle with is those that we feel like, okay, we need to divorce ourselves from those yep. people. Well, there's a lot of them. And, mm -hmm. and we have to learn how to live together. Sure. And so... What, what do we do with that? And, the, and I, I tend to always come to, you know, wanting our education, you know, educational system to do more okay. um, in this, okay. with this piece. Mm, um, obviously, us as, as individuals and families need to equally mm. come to the table with this. But if the kids aren't going to get it at home, they need to, they should be able to learn it somewhere. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what I think I struggle with the most is, those folks that are, are to me that feel so I extreme yeah. in their comments and their behaviors and their yeah. attitudes yeah. that it's scary. And I, I think the one thing that this has been mentioned in the past in this group that, you know, these times that are very very scary, the thing that it has afforded us is the reality of really what people think and mm -hmm. and and to the degree mm -hmm. and the and the numbers of mm -hmm. them are larger. Than I thought. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Fair point. Big issue. I mean, complicated one, and not not that's an easy one at all. Um, I I will say that for the most part, I think when we enter into conversation with people that we have absolutely total differences, and we see this a lot in clinical practice when we deal with, to be honest, couples. Right. So <laughs> couples are going to come in, and she thinks this. She might think something completely and totally different. So, not that you two have, that's never happened with these guys, but, but what we do through that process, right, through that work, is understanding each other's perspective and somehow building a bridge, right? Or, we don't. <laughs> and so, right, I mean, sometimes we don't, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> but if you think about the process, that's really what I'm suggesting we do, is, is be self-aware, be aware of ourselves, enter into conversation with them, with, with not with the goal of convincing them of, of who you are and what you're about, but really just sharing yourself. And I, I find that when we share ourselves, we're vulnerable, we're open, we, we put ourselves out there, not from a, 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 an intellectual, this is what I think and here's the opinion that I have, but this is how I feel, this is what my experience is, is a very different thing to argue about. It's very hard for me to argue with you about who you are rather than what you think. And so, challenging though, absolutely challenging. I, I realize that what, what we're suggesting here is, is not even a little bit easy. If it was easy, I, we probably wouldn't all be here together. Michael, it's, it's, you know, it's like one thing 
to be able, it's difficult to do it, you know, like one on one. Yeah. But doing it we, even within our, you know, relatively small community yeah. Yeah. is uh, quite a bit different. Yeah. Um, the last village council election that we had mm -hmm. was, I don't know if it's the nastiest, yeah. but it's certainly mm -hmm. one of the nastiest mm -hmm. that I had seen. I've lived here since 19. 83. Okay. Wow. So there was there was one candidate, lovely person, who was calling the other one anti-Catholic. There was another person, very well qualified, mm -hmm. lovely lady, that was calling the other one anti-Jewish. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then everybody kind of coalesced around these various sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like you just wanted to stand up and say, hey, you know, one has experience, the other one is very qualified, mm -hmm. you're both lovely people, mm -hmm. why can't we just talk about the issues? Mm -hmm. Why do we have to go into this personality mm -hmm. stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's like, how, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. If you're just one person and you're seeing, seeing mm -hmm. this, and there are a lot of us who are seeing that and yeah. commenting on yeah. it, and wondering, you know, like, this, this is one of the things that we, we want to do in this forum, mm -hmm. is to bring people together mm -hmm. to be able to exchange ideas, mm -hmm. to talk with one another in, you know, in a civil manner, mm -hmm. um, and, and solve problems, get things done. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like totally, totally helpless when I was talking to either one of these people. Yeah, fair point. Is there, is there a way that we can do this? <laughs> Really fair point, and here we get to the differences between sort of groups and individuals. So groups have a kind of a different dynamic among them. We, we in, in group we reinforce ourselves. We feel more righteous about no matter what our opinion is, because we feel safer and we feel secure. We feel like the world is outside and I'm inside the group. Individually, it's harder to to get to that point. So my own suggestion would be, and this is the way I've handled my own life, is to work on it on a and I know it's slow and tedious individual by individual basis. So I would be challenged and would wonder whether you would go out to lunch with your neighbor. And so I would wonder whether you would go out to lunch with your neighbor. And I would wonder whether those, those individual relationships changing, where we're just sharing each other's perspectives, not trying to convince each other, not trying to change the other person's view, just trying to, A, express myself, right? Be open, vulnerable, express myself, and also be empathetic in the moment and listen to where they're coming from. Be really listen, I mean mindfully listen. Those little changes make a big difference individually. But group on group, and then once you sort of develop a social structure around it, it's very hard because we, we firm up in group, right? So we, we kind of right, we kind of rigid, we get rigid, we feel safer, so we feel a little more a little more secure in my position, so I really don't care that you disagree. I'm gonna push you out of the group. But sitting at the daily tree. One on one, very different experience. Very, very different experience. One on one, yes. I, I've had some experiences uh, actively trying to talk to people yep. who are okay. very different. Yep. Um, I left the church I belonged to because the deacons were all talking about how happy they were that immigrants were being kicked out. And I thought, oh, you know, I don't really want to be here. But the minister said to me, well, you know, why don't you explain to them what immigrants are really like? Why this immigration problem is really happening? So I put together a PowerPoint, which I no longer get, it's a little dated. But, and they had a meeting where people were allowed to come and talk wow. to me and ask me questions and tell me things. So, and I said to them, this isn't about me being right. Uh -huh. But I just want you to think about this. Sure. To think about the fact that people can't come here legally. You know, that they're doing this for a variety of reasons. That, you know, these are the laws. And did you know they get kicked out if they're legal and they marry an American citizen? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. You know, did you know this? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Now, I am not going to say that anybody stood up and said, Hallelujah, I see the and in fact, the people that are truly racist there are going to be truly racist. But what I was trying to do 
was planned in the back of their mind an idea that they might think about this the next time they go mm -hmm. to say something. Mm -hmm. Is their mind going to change? Mm -hmm. No, but sometimes, maybe, sure. maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Maybe they'll think Doc is okay, but the others aren't okay. You know, maybe, sure. but they'll move a little along. As for the really racist people, and I've met some, my only answer is talk about their dogs. Talk about their children. Talk about how wonderful the trees are. Don't be unkind because they're limited. But don't try to convince them because it'll just frustrate yourself. But that's just my experience. Good, good. Really, really some really great examples. It, it's the personal connection that drives it, though, right? So it's that our relationship with each other that drives it. I do not believe in any way, shape, or form that Dick Cheney was going to change his mind until his daughter was sitting at his kitchen table. His kitchen table. His daughter was sitting at his kitchen table talking about who she is. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. And he wrestled. I have no doubt that he wrestled. But I don't think it would have happened. So it's that personal connection. It's the relationship. So what I'm suggesting is that we build relationships and have connections. Yes, absolutely. Because within that trusting relationship, we can challenge each other. If you and I know each other really well, and even if we have... Dog every day. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's Lucy, by the way. She's very sweet. But <laughs> we can have connection. If we get to know each other well and build trust, then I can challenge you and you can challenge me. And I can be a little ruffled, and you can be a little ruffled, and maybe when we're driving away from the daily treat, I might think a little bit differently about something. And think about it more as a, a planting of a seed rather than expecting this bar, big forest to grow. So what you're hoping for is that you've planted a seed and you've grown some water on it and some fertilizer, and that maybe in a year, there may be just a little bit of flower that, that grows. Paul. Yeah, uh, two, two thoughts. Sure. Uh, one is just going back to the toxic relationship and what yep. have you. Yep, Again, yep. I, I find for myself, you know, I actually like other perspectives, right? Yep. I, I like reading things that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I like talking to people. And it's a, but it's not necessarily changing someone's mind and finding agreement. It's it's agreeing to disagree sometimes. It's just being able to respect yes. the other person's per, you know, perspective. The second point I want to make on a different level is sort of, you know, one of the challenges I find, and we talked about this in our pre-meeting, so I was I was explaining how... I drive a lot for my job, and one of the things I do is I put plastic music in the car and just chill out because I'm just like, I listen to MSNBC and I get. But one of the things is, you know, we can try to find this, this piece, we can try to find these great connections with folks, but one of the problems is it's against this backdrop, this noise constantly hitting us. Yes. And so, you know, you'll be like in your car listening to this and you get out and you're like also riled up again. Yes. And I guess, you know, one of the challenges I know I find for myself again is trying to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Just trying to turn it off because it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. It just riles me up, it gets me stressed out, and it makes it harder to then listen to other perspectives. You know, if you listen to like an hour of MSNBC about why Brett Kavanaugh is a bad guy or something, mm -hmm. it's hard to sort of then engage somebody in a conversation if they like Brett Kavanaugh, you know? It's, it's, I think we just need to sort of step back a little bit. Agreed, and we, we touched on this earlier, that between technology and satellite radio and all kinds of things, we are overwhelmed, right? So it's, it's the waterfall is on you of, of the information, and if you want it, you can drown without question. You can continue to listen to that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So that intentional, it goes back to that awareness stage, that intentional of taking a break, turning on the classical music, switching something on, putting on a, a podcast that means something to you um, that's not about politics of the day. Um, something about taking those breaks gives us an opportunity to heal in those moments, right, and to sort of take a break. And Because uh, anxiety is, one of the things that drives anxiety is it becomes reinforcing on top of itself. So. Anx anxious thoughts make you more anxious. So it, it becomes this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. So we need to literally take a break from the whatever, whatever the stimulus is, right? So if it's that constant news, take a break. Oh, yeah, well, I was kind of afraid to speak up. I'm the only conservative Trump supporter. I'm well, the, the only conservative Trump supporter here. I'm hearing, you know, this this nice woman over here with the black top, you know, sure. I hear, you know, racist this and racist that, mm -hmm. but um, I was afraid to say this, but in front of this group, but, you know, the, the black people, uh, they don't want anybody white living in their neighborhood, mm -hmm. and they don't want any white friends, they don't want their kids to marry anybody white, 
you know, so they, uh, I know the, the white races don't want blacks in their neighborhood, but the blacks don't want anybody white in their neighborhood, you know, and uh, they, they don't, want, don't want anybody white coming to their black churches or their night, their black nightclubs either. So, well, <laughs> so consider that. We, we you never hear that, but this liberal brainwashing we get from the liberal news, you'll never hear that. So as a neighbor, so, may I speak? Why don't we, uh... <laughs> I would only say, as a pastor, that one of the real focuses of um, our evangelism is to be open and welcoming to the entire community. And uh, I think it's really important for you to know uh, that... Um, while I hear what you're saying, and I hear the fervor with what you're saying, but that we are very welcoming. We would love you to come, and that's not just this moment, but that is who we are. And so I invite you in, 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 this, in the context of this conversation to engage in conversations because you said the blacks don't want, and I, I disagree. Oh, but... But, but let's have conversations. Oh. So, you know, yeah. because there's certainly, there are certainly things that I might say, which are pretty rigid, that I might be helped by speaking to you. But, uh, but please be open to, um, to you not necessarily being right. Mm -hmm. Oh, so let's, we're going to let you just quickly uh, comment on that. And then we'll... Yeah, but the, the minute your daughter wants to marry a white boy, you'll have mm -hmm. a fit, mm -hmm. you know. The minute your, your son wants to marry a white girl, you'll have a fit. You see somebody blonde hair and blue eyes with blue eyes for what you know a blue eyed, uh, blonde haired uh, son in law, you'll have a fit. You know. It's all right. I certainly hear your perspective. We're gonna. Yeah, you say this. I know these liberals say this, but the minute you know. I still appreciate it. You still can see that blonde hair. Please. Yeah. Oh, sure. So, sir, I'm, I'm glad you were able to come to this forum. I think, Don, we have really did what we wanted to do, we'll open it up to the broader community. We're no longer preaching to the choir, uh, but there are some ushers that come into the into the church. So let me explain something to you, my friend. Me? Yes, sir. Okay. I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. I have no issue with anyone outside of being the color that I am, okay? A lot of my good friends, not only do I know them, they've been to my home. I live in the suburbs. I have a house in Suffern, New York. My two young sons, predominantly their friends are white. My sister-in-law is white. There is, I think there is a misconception. As Pastor said, he went to a family's event one of his members says she doesn't like black people. Well, the reality is there is ignorance on all levels. And ignorance is basically saying people make a decision based on the color of your skin or misconceptions. I beg to differ because you are, that is incorrect. You said blacks don't want whites to, uh, to integrate with their, live in the same neighborhood. Absolutely. I'm a black man that lives in a predominantly white neighborhood. My son has white friends that we interact, they come to our home. It's, I don't even teach color in my household. What I teach is character. I teach the way the person lives, how they should live, and you don't judge anyone by the color of their skin. You judge them by how they treat you. And I think if we had more perspective, because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We want better schools, we want better things for our families, we want to make money, we want, we want things in life, we want to live life. It's unfortunate that our neighborhoods have been segregated, our churches have been segregated for so long. You have white over here, there's a black church. Oh, there's a good black church down the road, there's a white church over there. Oh yeah, I agree with you. It's racism on the white side and there's racism on the black side. I, I, I totally agree with that. I understand the concept, but I'm sharing with you that your uh, the, the idea of a forum like this is to help stir things up and get and get perspectives changed. I'm glad you came tonight. 
but I am a witness as a young black man that the theory you have just put out of, of, into this forum is totally incorrect. I think it's a matter of people living together, understanding each other, and you move forward. Maybe for the fact that the matter is, uh, my, my two parents, I didn't grow up in the, in, you know, you're, I grew up in the suburbs of Westchester County, New York. I went to private schools. Has nothing to do at all, oh, he went to private schools and he's not the typical what you see it. No, it's not even a matter of that. The reality is, it's black people, white people, we're all people. And we're not just, a, a, we, everything is classified in colors and money and it's unfortunate. You should judge a person and you deal with a person by the character in which they live, the character of who you are. And you can never judge people based on a few people saying, well, they don't want to do that. They want, that's all people. And that is an incorrect statement. And unfortunately, we never want to live our lives in that area where we always think that is the way. So it really breaks the bear. I hope tonight uh, you can walk away with something a little different a little thought process differently. Whether you do or you don't, it's okay. But I'm telling you, the thought process in which you have is incorrect. Because I have no reason to step in line. I'm telling you the truth. So, I do appreciate you coming, but also we don't judge people on the color of their skin, but the content of their character. All right. Final thoughts as we wrap. It's about 8.30. I, Final I thoughts. Just I want to talk to his point as well, Please. because I think it's not entirely fair to just sort of jump on his opinions. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about some friends of mine who are Turkish. Okay. I worked in a Turkish school. People are very against Islam, you know, there's a lot of prejudice, blah, 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 blah. So I'm talking to my Turkish friend, who is one of the sweetest women in the world. And she's talking about how, you know, it's really terrible in Syria because they're killing the Sunnis. It would be okay if they were killing the Shiites. But it's terrible because they're killing the Sunnis. And, and I said, well, you know, why would that be? And she said, but you don't understand. If they're okay, they will kill us. They they will come back and kill us. And then I said, well, you know, the Kurds seem to have their, oh no, they're going to kill us. So it wasn't that she, this woman would be wonderful to anybody. But she was convinced that these other groups, if they were in charge, would murder them. Now, is that true? Probably not. But it was probably brought up by their leaders. So I think there's a lot of fear involved. I think there might be some black neighborhoods, just like some white neighborhoods, mm -hmm. that want to stay with people of their own color because they're afraid, not because they hate them. And it's the fear that's, that's ridiculous. Fear it is.